Hey, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to transfer a tooling pattern when you have to do it twice. So like on a saddle, uh, your fenders, your back housings, a lot of those types of patterns, you're going to have to do a left and a right. And if you're doing that kind of stuff, even on a portfolio sometimes, if you're tooling the front and back panels the same or anything like that, there's an easy way, a very efficient way, once you get one side all carved in and everything else, to get that one now transferred to the blank one. Um, and that way you're not having to trace it off. I draw all of my patterns on to the leather itself and then carve it. So the whole design is done on the actual piece of leather. I'm drawing it one time. I'm carving it one time um, for this one completed, completed side. If you are drawing on paper, this will work as well. A lot of people would prefer to put their patterns on paper, get all the details ironed out, get the design done, and then take transfer paper like this, just a normal type of uh, transfer paper or just tracing paper and then trace that pattern off and then put it onto the leather carve it in. Still at that moment, you can now take and transfer that to your other side or the blank piece uh, a lot quicker and easier than having to trace off every one of these lines and do all that. The basically what we do is we call those tap offs. And you've seen us use tap offs before for belt patterns. They're very popular for belt patterns. They also work really well for spur straps, uh, wallet designs, any kind of repetitive tooling that you're doing. If you get a design that you like and then you wanna save that and be able to replicate that multiple times, make a tap off. Take Take a piece of leather, cut it out the exact shape of whatever product you're building, and then go ahead and carve that pattern in there. And then that way, next time you want to use it, all you've got to do is tap it off onto your blank one. You're not having to trace all these lines every time. Not to mention, this, even this sturdy tracing film will wear out over time, and it will start to change your pattern some. Your patterns will get just a little sloppier over time the more and more you use them. So I'm going to show you how to do that right quick. Uh, on something like a fender or even a rear housing or something on a saddle it can be difficult if you've seen us in some of the other videos use a tap off for belts it's fairly easy to just hold that belt strip on top of your belt blank and then tap it off with your hammer and then move it down but if you're using if you're trying to tap off a pattern this large it can be very difficult to hold this exactly in position on top of the fender and tap everywhere you need to tap to get that transfer that pattern to transfer without it moving on you so i'm about to show you a little trick that i've learned that works out really well holds everything together and you'll tap it off exactly where it needs to be and it'll be correct. So let me show you that at the bench. Okay, so we've got our fender here. This fender has been, uh, we drew the pattern on there, we designed it, and then we went ahead and carved it. Now I've given this fender over the weekend to dry. You wanna be sure though that the fender, is, you don't have to give it that much time, but you wanna be sure that it's absolutely dry. It does not have any of its case left because when we go to tapping this off with a hammer, we do not wanna mash down our carving. We want our carving nice and crisp and uh, the way we laid it in the first time because we are going to tool this piece. Um, also on your tap offs, if you're just creating tap offs for belts or wallets, you wanna let them dry really, really good before you go to use them as well. That way they will uh, create the proper impression on here to transfer the pattern. So, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick a couple spots up here near the top, a couple here and a couple down here um, to put some small holes into this fender. And that's going to uh, give us some, some anchor points to anchor the fender down when we go to uh, put it on the cased blank fender. And so what we're going to use to do this with are these little bitty, I don't know if you can see them in the video, but they are very, very small shoe tacks. Uh, and they call these clinching nails, or that's what I've uh, heard them called and, and, and know them as. And they've got a very sharp little point on them that when they hit they're, they're designed for like lasting and in shoe work and stuff i use them in my horn plugs as well my saddles but when they hit anything hard like metal that 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 sharp tip there clenches and when it does it makes it more difficult for those nails to back out they basically clench themselves in place and so these work really good for that you could use any kind of real tiny nail but we want the smallest nail that we can find in the shop or at our local hardware store because we don't want to leave a big large hole in this fender but what we're going to do is we're going to pick out like i said two spots here two here and two here based on this fender size i think that'll be enough to hold it where i want it and we're going to go ahead and pick a, a couple spots in the background so you want to find a background piece 
I try to keep those away from any of my stump areas because the eye is drawn to that stump area because that's the end of that movement. And so I try to not put one there or there just in case I get a little discoloration from the actual metal nail. I don't want it to just jump out right there. Um, if it's somewhere else, it's more likely to be uh, looked over and not noticed. But what we want to do, I'm going to pick a piece of background right here. And you want to go kind of right in the middle of the background piece. Um, I try not to go in the cut. You could, you could go in the cut theoretically and you think it'd, it'd be hidden a lot better. But I, I find that if you do it there and you do get any discoloration, it's going to discolor that little piece of vine right there. So I want to be dead center here. We're pro all my stuff I'm going to antique. So if there is any discoloration, it's usually uh, gone by the time I'm done antiquing. But I will find a spot right here in the middle of a piece of background. And I will put a very small hole right in there. And I want to be able to find that on the back side of this fender. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do some, I'll pick this spot, say, I'm going to go right over here and put a little hole. And you don't want to waller it out too much. You don't want a very large hole, but you can see, you know, it's a, it's a hole. But we're going to bar ground that. Or if you're using a matting tool, even better. You're going to mat that down. You're never going to see that little hole. And so we'll just kind of come along here and put these where we think they'll be great anchor points to hold this fender in place as we do our as we do our tap off transfer here um, and i will usually try to pick a larger piece of background if i can if your pattern is very tight um, you just got to kind of pick what you can but i'm just going to go through here space these out best i can And like I said, you don't need a ton of them. You just need a few. So we've got two there, two there, and then two up here. Now that's going to create an anchor position, an anchor point to hold this fender in place while we're tapping it off. So what we want to do is go and find our holes on the back side of the fender and push our nail in there. You just want to push it in so that it's where you want it and it's held steady. Don't go all the way through the leather yet because we're gonna set it on our other fender and if you've got the point sticking through, you don't wanna scratch it up. And you might need to come in through the back, through the front side again, just to find your holes on this side, but just take your time. This is, like I said, this is very easy to do, um, especially with these little tacks because these little tacks are very sharp and so they kind of hold themselves where they need to be in here. So you can see on the back of my fender where my nails are. They're evenly kind of spaced out. It's gonna hold that fender in place real nicely. So now we'll grab a, our cased um, blank fender and we'll be ready to do our tap off transfer. Okay, so here I've got my fender. I went ahead and gave it a little bit more case just so it'll take the transfer really well. We're gonna lay it flat. We wanna be sure that it doesn't have any bubbles in it, you know, just or bends in it, just kind of flatten it out nicely. We're gonna set this fender on top. This is the one that has the pattern. It also has our nails in place where we want them. And so now we'll just begin to line this up and make sure that it's exactly where we want it. And if you cut your saddle parts out by hand, like I do, um, they may not match up just perfect. It depends on how good you are with your knife, but I don't worry too much. Just get it where it's fairly well squared up and you're where you need to be. Once you're happy with where it's at, then you can hold your hand and press down and then drive those nails through. Now on these clenching nails, they don't necessarily need to clench for this purpose, but it makes it, it does make it kind of nice. They're hitting the rock here on my slab. And so they do kind of clench a little bit, so they're not gonna pop off. And now those two fenders are joined and they're exactly, you know, the right position. It's where I need to be. I will still put a lot of pressure here as I'm tapping this fender out, 
but I'm just doing that mainly so it's not moving around. But this really, really helps to keep that fender from moving. You can see how large this is. If you were just trying to hold it with your hand and tapping this fender, and they usually get to clapping, because no matter how hard you try, you got one that's dry, one that's wet, it's gonna do a clapping movement there and it's gonna move around and it's gonna wander a little bit. And so your, pad, your pattern, you can get some double lines and your pattern not exactly where you want it. So I find that this is really helpful. So now that we've got those in there, all we've got to do now is just start here at the top and just begin tapping this fender. And you want to take your time and you want to be sure that you're tapping very firmly. I mean, you don't have to just, just squeeze the water out of it with your hits, but you want a nice, good, firm uh, connection there with that hammer and that way you're creating that impact that's needed to transfer those lines and you want to be sure and hit every single square inch of this fender all the way down and that way you're you're not missing any of your pattern um, and and I do it I'll use to do it a couple times and just really make sure that I've got it since they're nailed together it's a little harder to peek in there and make sure you're not missing anything so I go ahead and just do it twice and hope we got everything and then we'll pull that fender apart but just go ahead now and just tap it, tap it off. Okay, so we've got all the tapping done, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and just try to separate these. You just wanna be kinda careful and not stretch your cased fender too much. So you just wanna give it a nice little tug and it should that nail should pop right out. That one, that one. And so now, you can see that we've transferred completely the pattern. All of our lines are there, and now we all we have to do is carve this now. We didn't have to hand trace all of these lines. We didn't have to do any of that. Now they're all here. Um, you will notice that your maker stamp will be backwards if you have a maker stamp in your fender. Um, something else to keep in mind if you're doing this for like a portfolio and say your, um, you have a brand on there or something on the front, you may want to mark off on the back side where that is and that way you don't tap too hard right in that area so that you don't have a bunch to rub out there um, with a backwards letter or backwards brand or something. Here on my maker stamp, it's not a real big issue. What I'll do is I'll just put my maker stamp on there and when I impress that stamp, you won't notice any of that uh, impression there that's all backwards there. I've done this a ton of times. It works really, really well. The one thing you wanna keep in mind, and then on this fender, you can just pull these nails out and just push them through with a awl or something and then pluck them out. When you tool this, you will not notice any of these uh, nail holes in the background. Like I said, you may get a slight bit of discoloration, but by the time you oil it and antique it and everything else, you won't notice it at all. So that's what I, you know, and it depends on the nail you use too. You may experiment with that and certain nails may, you know, leave a little bit more of a stain than others. I find these little shoe tacks work really well and a very minimal, if any, uh, little discoloration right there. The one thing I wanna mention is anytime you use a tap off, don't trust your border lines. You can trust all of this, okay? But you wanna reset your border on the actual piece that you put the pattern on. The reason is, is again, if you're cutting these out by hand, they're not die cut true. They're gonna be a little bit different. And what I like to do is ensure that my border is correct. Um, and that'll, that'll make sure that your border looks right. Because if your border is off or has a wobble in it, that's going to be very noticeable. The eye will be drawn right to it if this border around here is not the same. And it's real simple to fix that or to ensure that that's correct is just check your border on your original piece and then set your calipers and just go along there and reset. You can see how far away that line was from this edge. And then there'll be some spots where it's closer and it's dead on. But you just wanna you know, go ahead and scribe you a border. This line you'll actually carve. Do not carve your tapped off borders because they're, they're usually off a little bit. Um, so I like to make sure that they're where they need to be and that way the border area on this piece 
is correct. You can see how far away we are right there. And then you can, when you're carving this in, you can make any fine tune adjustments you need to your actual elements within the pattern to meet up to that true border. And then down here, I'll just carve that one because that's not really bordering anything. We just want to make sure that these side ones are correct. But that's it, guys. That's tapping off a pattern on a very large piece of leather. Like I said, this would work great for a portfolio. Um, you know, any kind of larger project you might be working on. Um, you know, if you're doing uh, toe fenders or taps for a set of stirrups, you can get one carved, tap the other one off. Everything will work out just fine, and it, it saves you a lot of time from having to trace every single one of all these little lines, and it ensures that your pattern is accurate, and, uh, and it actually mirrors this original pattern, and you don't have to uh, trust your hand and being, being real precise and getting it just right. So give that a try. If you've got a project coming up, give that a try, and uh, let me know how it works for you. Thank you all.